same week, one of my very good friends sat in my office and he told me, you know, I have to talk to you about something. You may never speak to me again, but I have to tell you, God wants you to know that it was never that you didn't believe in him, it was that you were angry. And that that's okay because he loved you the whole time regardless. My family, Kelly, Lauren, and John Michael, had invited me to church a hundred times, and I always told them no. I always shut them down. And they invited me to the Easter service at Trinity that year, two years ago. But I had I had agreed to come. But that was before that I had these conversations with Duran and Paul. Well, a couple of days later, my friend Sarah, when he saw on the video, she sends me a Facebook invitation. Found out later that she didn't want to send that invitation. Because in her words, I was one of the most adamant atheists she had ever met. She didn't think that there was any hope. That was my tipping point. That invitation, followed, following all the other things that had happened, I agreed to come to church that day. Because I sat in that seat. I had so many thoughts. I had so many fears. I was feeling things that I didn't know what were. I was feeling God. And as I sat there, all I could think was, how will I explain this to people? How will I tell my friends that I was wrong? There was so much pride there that I had to get out of the way. Well, later that night, I prayed for the first time in a long time. The first time in my adult life, I prayed. I felt such overwhelming peace and joy. God saved me that day. And I was free. all I had done, after all I had said against God, He saved me. He cared enough to save me. He can save you too, no matter what you've done. That day, I was redeemed. So my story begins in the middle of the living room with some friends watching the league play ball game the week before Easter. Just like many times before, I went over there and I was going to watch the game. But instead, my friends Val, Sheena, and Vanessa were sitting on the couch and they were talking about the upcoming Easter service. And they were telling the stories of the testimonies that were being told. So instead of watching the game, I sat there and listened. And they may not have known, but one of those stories touched me. It was about a woman who thought that she didn't need God. She thought that her life was great. She was saying, I don't need religion. Well, at that point in time, that's how I was feeling. I thought that I, I didn't need anything, that I was fine. Everything that was happening to me was just normal. Well, after time and time again that my friends invited me, I heard her story, so I decided, okay, I'm gonna go. My husband was so relieved because he had tried several times as well. But I came that, that opening, grand opening day, and from that moment, and week after week, I kept feeling better and better. And I started realizing that those things that I was feeling before, all the anxiety and the feeling that I didn't need God or religion, that was going away. And one day, we had a visiting pastor, Mark King, came. And he said at his closing statement that he was going to do a countdown. So he started at three and all the way to one. At three, I started having those excuses come through my mind again. I don't know enough about scripture, or I'm too young. Well, once he hit one, all those excuses went away. And it's a good thing, because after that moment, I felt so much peace, I felt so much joy, and I felt so much love and acceptance. Because I wasn't entering into a religion, I was entering into a relationship.